I'm Steve Halford, and what I'm doing here is a little bit of uh, what you might call rinky-dink raku. Uh, something I've been working on since the uh, well, last 20 years, uh, and it's this, this word raku is uh, a form of Japanese uh, pottery, actually a firing process. Uh, what I do is taken from it. It's not really what the Japanese do. Uh, their form was more of a ceremonial thing where they use the pottery. They, they actually start in the morning with just a ball of clay and by evening have it fired, glazed, and we're having tea out of it, a little tea bowl they'd make. But this is taking that idea of how they did it and doing something totally different which you're going to see today. I don't know anybody that doesn't like me, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist because everything seems to exist somewhere. But this is mine, as I've figured it out. But it's real rinky-dink, but it works. Over here is an old converted electric kiln. I've converted it to propane. And I have the tank over here. And I cut a hole in the side where it blasts in and a hole on the top where it exhausts. Now I'm going to be firing two pieces. I've been doing uh, the last many uh, pieces I've been doing have been birds. And uh, here's uh, some stork, wood storks. And as you can see them uh, in various flight positions and uh, with a, a Florida scene. Uh, I do many different areas with many different kinds of birds. This one has, these are wood storks. And I place it into the kiln so it's not touching anything. This old kiln here, besides what it was, I put kaolin cloth in the inside to hold the heat. It just gets it hotter, quicker, and retains the heat. And uh, I move these around making sure that I got them so they don't touch. And they don't touch the side of the kiln. It's a close one with these two pieces. They're, they're as large as I can make them and get away with it. At the bottom, it's going to blast through their shards of old uh, kiln parts and stuff that will heat up, that the uh, propane uh, flame will hit. And that will heat up and then eventually heat up the whole kiln, heat up the pieces to their glowing red hot. And then it's eyeballing it. You watch, because as glaze heats up, it goes from a powder that's on there now, starts to melt, and then it starts bubbling. It ends up like, looks, then it, the bubbles pop and it goes to like a moon surface with these craters. But then the next step is it flows together like glass. And when you watch it, it'll be glowing red when it's at that stage. When you watch it, when those bubbles disappear, those craters disappear, and it becomes glossy. Then you got to reach in with tongs, and it's a little crowded in here. Grab the piece, come out, and drop it into a, a bucket of some sawdust, and then take a pan of sawdust and pour it on top. Meanwhile, Flames are going to fly, and it's because it's about 1800 degrees, and the sawdust is going to instantly burst. Then a lid will be placed on it, which will suffocate the flame, and a lot of smoke. And the smoke will go into the clay and the glazes, giving you a unique, uh, always one of a kind effect. I can never repeat it. Sometimes it's fantastic, sometimes it's a bust, but that's how it is. That's artwork.
slowly heating it up because it's really cold. And it'll do that for 10 minutes or so. We'll let it just slowly heat up. Then I'll close it down and turn it up and go for it. Um, now that we've taken a little break from outdoors heating up uh, the kiln, in a few minutes I gotta remember to go out there and turn it up. But right now it's just slowly getting warmer and warmer. And uh, we've stepped inside to look at some of the finished products here. Uh, these were all done the same way as those I'm doing out there in the same kiln. Uh, we have all bird theme, um, different. And this is what I've been working on is these uh, many bird themes. I start out, this one here, of course loons, but this, what you see here is just wax with uh, a mixture of lamp black in the wax. It's a liquid wax. So I can see the wax normally comes about the same color as this. So it's, it really gets hard to see where you're putting it. So I put the black in just so I can see what I'm doing. It'll burn away. So I'm not worried. So I paint in my theme uh, as I wish the wax to be. Then I'll take glazes, low fire, uh, your basic glazes, you know, greens, blues, whites, all the different colors. They are chemicals, so it's not paint. When you're putting them on, you, you can't say, okay, this color looks right and put it on because that isn't how it works. Uh, it's a chemical that's going to change color in the firing. So you have to have done it enough to know when I put this color on, it looks brown now, but it's going to turn green. You have to know that. So when you're painting them, they, they look different. Sometimes they look gaudier than you would have wanted them. But in the end, and it's just through practice that you learn that this one's a certain way and that one's a certain way and what's going to happen. But again, wherever you see the black, that was wax. And when it fires, up to 1800 degrees now it's going to burn away the wax totally so it's just going to be bare clay wherever you see the black here that'll be bare clay and your colors that you put on some of them will bleed through others and that's tricky because like you'll put a, a blue down in the background then you just put a white over it. Well, you, you'd say, no, I didn't want this white here. I wanted it light blue. But it will turn white blue because it's going gonna, gonna to bleed through. So like this one here, the yellow and the blue, I, I put the yellow down first right up to here. The blue come down over it, and you see it bleeding through. One of the things I try to use a lot, I found interesting, is emerald green, low fire emerald green. And there is a Caribbean blue that does the same. You read on the jar, it will say, it, it does a little danger warning. It, it contains uh, uh, copper. And in fact, a lot of uh, school use now, they don't even supply that glaze anymore because it, it does have the uh, chemicals that they caution you about. But those chemicals they caution you about are what give you the beautiful results. And with Raku, you're outdoors, so any of the fumes that are coming from the chemicals, you don't have to worry about. So it's, it's not a dangerous effect. But, and I don't know if you can see, when you hit the light on this right, this bird, which I put green on, turns gold. I don't know if you can see it or not, but you, you'll see the gold reflect off. That is copper. At 1,800 degrees, that copper starts to melt. 
and it becomes like a shiny penny. It'll, uh, when it's fired, sometimes, oh, it's so gorgeous. It, it, uh, it's just bright gold. Now something you'll see too is cracks. This is part of the raccoon. The glaze, the glossy, it's melted, it's flowed out at 1800 degrees. It's, it's now a glass. But then you take this piece with this molten glaze and throw it into a combustible material. I use sawdust. It's easy to work with and got a lot of it. The sawdust immediately bursts into a big flame just gushing out of the, the bucket you put it in. And you'll see all that later, but I'm just giving you preamp on that. These cracked areas, the glass cracks. How you kind of uh, bring this on in a way, you can uh, reinforce that. To do, you never know when it's going to happen. I love it when it does. Sometimes you get very horizontal cracks and sometimes you get the little checkered cracks. They happen when you yank it out of the combustion chamber and you put it into water. Oh, and this thing will hiss and howl, and that's the fun of it. And uh, it cracks the glass, and then the blackness of the soot and all will go into the cracks, and this is what you'll see there. Sometimes you never know. Sometimes it uh, happens a lot. Unlike this one, it didn't happen at all. And I usually coat some of these things I can be more experimental with on the inside, but I just use robin's egg blue on the inside of most all of them because that's just a standard quickie I can do for each of them. But what I found, even though they're done the same, there is immense difference. And that's why I can just use that one robin's egg and I'll get so many varieties of reactions that why, why experiment with different glazes? Because that one glaze is going to have a lot of things going on. So that's what happens. And you can see how different they'll come to look. You're putting on to these pieces, when you glaze them, actually a liquid powder. The glaze is a powdered glass at this stage. And it's, it, when you put it on, that's basically what you're doing is just putting on uh, liquid powder that immediately uh, the clay sucks the moisture out of it and it sets real quick. A lot quicker than any paint you would ever put on something because it, it just sucks it right in and, and sometimes it's a little aggravating because uh, you're trying to get a nice line and as soon as you start the line you're out of glaze and you got to go back for more and then you just touch it and you're out. You're out. You're out. And it can be uh, consuming at times. And, uh, but you've got to watch that you don't get too much glaze on an area. Or it will just bubble up. I did got a little bit too much on this lip here. And the bubbles are still there because it started to burn in various areas uh, when it didn't have enough glaze. And these areas weren't flowing out. So it's, boy, you're watching everything at the same time. One area is bubbling, the other area is starting to burn. It's like, uh-oh, when do I pull something in between where I might have to leave some of these bubbles so I don't burn out this area. That's what makes it fun, if not annoying, <laughs> because it's like, <laughs> and then it's like, oh, I hope it worked. And you don't know because when, when it goes into the carbon, the sawdust, you pull it out and it's just this ugly black, which you'll see. And, and then you got to scrub it with a brush and uh, scrub it down and scrub and scrub to get all the, the burnt sawdust off the piece.
I do with the lid? <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, pieces have just been pulled and put into the sawdust and now the, they're being basically suffocated. The flame is out but uh, lack of oxygen but the, it's still smoldering and the carbon, the smoke is going into the clay and glazes. So all that was wax is in, gonna end up now bare clay and black from the carbon soot. It's very experimental. At this point, I could open them up and it'll start burning again. I can close it and it will start smoldering again. If I let it burn up without doing this, it, the black lines wouldn't show up. They just end up being uh, bare clay. I'll let these sit now for about five minutes or so and then they've done their thing. And then I have two buckets of water that I'll immerse them in uh, slowly. And so I don't trap air, I don't flip them over, I gotta come in bottom side down. If water comes in, it needs to come in so the steam will go up. Because if you had it fall over and go in sideways, it's gonna burst your piece because the steam will get trapped. These are heavy pieces. Get the smoky thing out of the way. That amazes me that The clay doesn't break. I'm doing two steps at one time here. I'm cleaning it off while I'm <laughs> cooling it down. Now this is what I said, you got to make sure it doesn't flip over on you. Now this, oh, got some nice, nice crackle in this one. Excellent, excellent. Um, it's still dirty now. See the white will end up being real white, but right now it's dirty. It's going to have to be scrubbed, but I see a lot here that, that came out neat. I'm, I can't wait to get this scrubbed down. Got some major a fracture crack here, but that's Raku, so what? This. Pottery is not utilitarian pottery, which means you couldn't fill this up with something to drink or eat because it's porous, the cracks are in the inside. If you were to put water in this, you'd have a puddle underneath it. It's purely an art form. It's, it's not a, a utilitarian. 
Okay, number two. Oh, this one got dirty and dirty. I see this one here is very dirty, but that'll all scrub off. Just see, just a little rubbing there. All right. Now, as you notice, it's it's a little in it looks almost permanent, uh, dirty, but that can be cured. Sometimes it takes a bit of elbow grease to clean them up because it gets, some of that might not come out. It burns right into the, the glaze. And sometimes that can be what you call a happy accident. No tool light. No to a light. Now I don't, I'm not sure why this, this pockness happens. Um, occasionally I get them on them and I'm not sure what's going on with that, why it pocks like that. Just rack it up to raccoon. <laughs> 